don't know if you guys are familiar with this. I, I'm going to start, and I imagine most of you are, but if you grew up in church at all, you're probably familiar with the fact that here's the church, here's the steeple. Is it, anybody, you know it. Open the door, and there's all the people. There they are. We're doing all this stuff at home now because I have a little girl who's learning how unique it is to be able to do stuff like that, and she's really amazed by it. So all of a sudden, I'm this amazing guy. I'm like, Lucy, ooh, and she's like, Dad, you're blowing my mind. I, uh, I was thinking about that this week, and, um, and it's great, you know what I mean? I have nothing against church and steeple. I did that probably my whole childhood. But I thought about the fallacy in the, in the idea that the goal is to get the people inside the church. And um, really, the goal is, is that the church wouldn't be filled with people, but that those people would leave the church and be sent out. And so this morning, I, I hope that, that what I have to share with you would challenge your heart. Um, I, I keep feeling like this... Um, Every time that I speak, I mean, they're not new concepts. Hopefully, they're going to serve as more of a a signpost for you on your journey forward. You know, I don't watch a whole lot of hockey, but sometimes I feel like I'm this hockey puck that the Lord is just sort of gently tapping, remember, remember, remember. Every once in a while, there's a pa in there when, when I need when I need it. But, uh, but for the most time, uh, most part, I feel like God is guiding us. And um, this morning, I feel like the Lord wants to guide you and me. I feel like he's deposited something on my heart again for you, and it's fresh. I mean, this week as I was, as I was spending time preparing and kind of putting things together, I really wasn't sure where God was taking this. I thought it was going one way, and he took it another, and, and it was awesome. So um, I know you're going to hear from him today. Would you open your heart and allow him to speak to you? Um, I was thinking about this verse in Psalm 127.1. It says, unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. And how much I often try and do things in my own strength and um, try and make something happen or I try and take what God wants to happen and and do it on my own. And really, unless God's the one behind it, I'm going to find myself, you know, running on a treadmill and not really going anywhere. And uh, this morning, I believe, is going to be a building block for us. So would you take your Bible and would you turn to Jeremiah chapter 9? Um, I don't know where you guys are in your Bible reading plans, if you've caught up or if you're behind or wherever you are. We've been doing these Bible reading plans on the, on the church website. You can find a link. But I found myself uh, probably a day behind where I wanted to be, so I was reading two days' worth of, of Bible reading. And I came across this verse in Jeremiah and then this next verse that we're going to read in Matthew. Jeremiah 9, uh, verse 23 and 24. This is what the Lord says. Let not the wise man boast in his wisdom, or the strong man boast in his strength, or the rich man boast in his riches, but let him who boasts boast about this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness on earth, for in these I delight, declares the Lord. I've heard this verse before, but I want to chew on it for a second this morning. Let him who boasts boast about this, that he understands and knows me. That's sort of a big thing. I thought, I mean, I have a relationship with God, but how many of us can say we really understand God? I I, I mean, I, I think God is way beyond my understanding, but I love how he just lays it out for us. It's He doesn't just leave it, understand and know me, understands and knows me, comma. He's saying, this is me. I want you to understand that I am the Lord who exercises kindness justice and righteousness on the earth, for in these I delight. Those are really powerful words. First of all, that I am the Lord, that I am the I am, that no matter what you're going through, no matter where you are, I am. That is such a powerful thing if we can just grasp it. And beyond that, that I exercise kindness, justice, and righteousness on the earth. We kind of talked a little bit, even the last time that I spoke about some of these concepts. The interesting thing I found as I was sort of germinating on this and kind of catching up on my Bible reading is I turned to the book of Matthew. And it'll be on the screen, but if you'd like to turn there, it's Matthew chapter 23. And it's in the middle of this passage where Jesus is talking to the Pharisees and correcting them on a lot of things that they're doing wrong. And if you look at Matthew 23, verse 23, Jesus says this, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You give a tenth of your spices, mint and dill and cumin. What he's saying is you, you're tithing to the most, I love how Barnes' commentary said, the most scrupulous amount. He's, they're not just tithing finances. They're tithing to the, the most minute detail. Jesus is saying, but you have neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. I'm reading this, and I'm like, wait a second. 
Did I just read this? And I flip back to Jeremiah. Jeremiah, the God who exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness. Jesus says, you're neglecting the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. You should be paying attention to these more important things while still doing all these other things that you're doing. I think there are a couple big lessons that we can take away from Scripture when we look at it. Um, I feel like when I look at the Old Testament as a whole, the thing that constantly crosses my mind is like how disobedient Israel is. You guys ever read that and think, like, why don't they just get it together and obey God because life would be a whole lot easier? I mean, have you ever thought that? And the ironic thing is, like, I'm probably, you know, not listening to God in my life right now, but I'm like, yeah, Moses, Joseph, whoever, you really should pay attention to the Lord a little bit more, people of Israel, and just attack the city, you know what I mean? And and in my own life, you know, we have these things that we we tend to not want to deal with. Well, if you look at, so the Old Testament I look at is a lot of that, and I look at the New Testament, and you see a lot of what, what Jesus breathes into saying, I want you to obey the spirit of the law, not just the letter of the law. You know, the, the law is important. We've got the whole Old Testament. The law is so important that you become a, a, a person who knows God. But I want you to, to have the spirit behind it, that breath of life that makes the law mean something. If you're tithing, that's great. But if you're just tithing to tithe, you're not going to get anywhere, and you're going to find yourself really tired and really frustrated. So look at these two scriptures one more time. I don't know if you want to keep a finger in each area, but we'll keep jumping back and forth here. They'll be on the screen. The words weren't exactly the same, but I pulled out the uh, concordance as I was looking this up just to look at the similarities. So in Matthew, Jesus says, You're neglecting the more important matters of the law. First of all, he says justice. And we come across that same word justice. Now we're talking Greek and Hebrew, but in the Old and New Testament. But both of those actually mean, when you're saying justice, he means judgment, like the act of being just, making a judgment. That's what that word means. Also, you look on in Matthew and he says mercy. In in the Old Testament, he says kindness. But it really is pretty much the same word because when you look at the word mercy, it also translates as loving kindness. So you see these attributes of God, and and I don't think it's a a mistake that it comes up twice in Scripture. And I feel like if something appears more than once, it's something I should probably be paying attention to. And for me, Jeff, on a whatever morning it was when I was reading, if it comes up twice in my devotions, then it's like God's trying to tell me something. And so the third one, though, was a little bit different. You look at what he says in the Old Testament, righteousness. I am the Lord who exercises righteousness. What is righteousness? He's not, it's not necessarily the act of being righteous, but it is, it, it's not doing, but it is being. Let me say that. It's not, okay, when you talk about just, because that, that righteousness can also be translated justice, but we're not talking about making a judgment. We're talking about being just. So what's the problem with that? Well, when I look in the New Testament and I see these, these other three words, I think, okay, well, Faithfulness makes a little bit more sense for us than righteousness because we know that our righteousness is like filthy rags, right? Scripture tells us. I have no righteousness on my own. Okay, we're going to come back to this, but I want to kind of chew on these thoughts. But righteousness is, is a God quality that I don't have. Faithfulness now is something completely different. I was memorizing um, Psalm 34 a while back. It's a great psalm with a lot of great promises. Whether or not you, you memorize it or jot it down, it's something you could definitely go to and, and pull from. I encourage you to do that. But there's a lot of promises for the righteous. It says specifically, the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cry. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. But if you look in Romans chapter 3, Paul quotes a couple times from the Old Testament saying, none of us are righteous. And so where does that leave us in this kind of hopeless, like, floating, well, God has all these blessings for righteous people, but I'm not righteous, so what am I supposed to do? I love this. God is righteous and he is just, and in his mercy, he enacted probably the greatest act of demonstrate, the greatest demonstration of justice he could have by sending his son to be judged on our behalf. So where we were unable to be righteous, where we didn't have what it took to kind of meet God's standard of righteousness, he enacted his perfect justice. And our response to that is faithfulness. Does that make sense? I, I kind of went a whole bunch of different ways, but, but I kind of want to hone back in on this idea of us being faithful, and that is our act in response to God's righteousness. <laughs> 